for more analysis on this, former CIA, CIA Director Ambassador James Wolsey. Uh, Ambassador, thank you. Uh, obviously, you're, a, you're very well connected. You've been in the middle of the intelligence community. Donald Trump saying, in part, conclusions uh, in this case no more reliable than the conclusions on WMDs in Iraq. That's pretty harsh, and I would assume you disagree with Donald Trump. Well, this is a complex area. Mm. Uh, one thing that is, uh, I think, uh, central uh, here is that it is quite plausible that the uh, Russian, let's say, civilians or not uh, people directly paid by the government, but that Russians, uh, as well as people from other countries, um, launched lots of cyber attacks uh, on uh, the uh, on the the uh, grid mm. or on the uh, the overall structure uh, and. It uh, doesn't uh, uh, have to be measured in its effectiveness in terms of the number of attacks. There was a piece in the Wall Street Journal yesterday that, uh, by two experts that uh, said uh, there had been thousands of attacks launched with this kind of technology because it's so old and simple. Uh, so, you know, the, the Russians might have uh, launched a lot, but done uh, very little, if any, uh, 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 thing to the whole system. And certainly there's no report, and Clapper uh, confirms that, there's no report that suggests that they uh, changed the totals or were able to change the outcome or the number of votes for one candidate versus another or anything like that. But he also suggests, you know, that Russia has taken cyber attacks to a whole new sophisticated levels, something that we haven't seen before. Of course, the over, overarching impression here is that Russia did have a big impact. It didn't affect the vote totals, but it did have a big uh, impact on swaying voters with the release of all of those emails from the DNC. Um, it, is this a, such a brazen attack? Have you seen anything like this before? Or is this being blown out of proportion just a little bit? Well, the Russians have been brazen about their interference with other countries' processes uh, now for about uh, 60 or 70 years anyway. Mm. Uh, they call it disinformation, disinformatia. And as Clapper said, that's what he was talking about just uh, before this uh, segment, mm. uh, in uh, which he uh, talked about their um, uh, publishing uh, false uh, uh, stories in papers, uh, uh, doctoring photographs, et cetera. They have a lot of people involved in this, and they have been for a long time in Europe and, uh, and elsewhere. So uh, there's nothing new about this. It's, it's a terrible thing to do. Uh, it's uh, something we ought to try to stop them from doing, but it's uh, certainly not new. And uh, there's uh, a, a lot about it that uh, seems, uh, the, about the cyber attacks, that seems pretty clumsy and using old systems and so forth. Right. Very quickly, uh, Ambassador, the, the, a call now for even greater sanctions. Is that appropriate and are they effective? Maybe appropriate, sometimes uh, effective. Mm -hmm. uh, what really would matter to Russia more than anything else is if we would come up, uh, and it's pretty easy to use methanol with an M this way, uh, you give the tax credits, let's say, for uh, electric vehicles and methanol-powered vehicles to use fuel other than petroleum-based. Mm. Uh, that'll drive the price of oil uh, down, and that is a very, very troubling thing for the Russians, much yes. more than these sanctions. Very good point. Fascinating story. So much more to say, but we're out of time. Ambassador Wolseley, uh, as always, thank you very much. Good to be with you. Appreciate it.